did anything wrong at that point. After all, the umpires had put the, head, had put the headphones on. That's basically the signal that the replay can be shown. After being told by Major League Baseball that the play was not reviewable, the umpires then gathered on the field to, to discuss the matter. After a lengthy conference, the umpires broke up their meeting. They called Salvador, Salvador Perez out at third. That erased the error by Suarez and, the, and, took, and took the run off the board. So it would not have been Kinsler's error. It would have been Suarez's error in the first place. The umpires told a pool reporter that the call was made, that the call was changed after the umpires took a, consist, a consensus of the information during, the, during their meeting. Crew chief, crew chief umpire Larry Vanover. explain quote this the video board did not come into the play in the decision you're not allowed to do that unquote the tigers rallied for two runs to break the tie a few minutes earlier or later rather then held on some through some shaky work by the bullpen But the umpires reviewed it anyway, and then they talked about it again, and, and they called Salvador, Salvador Perez out at third to end the inning, and thus negated the, the go-ahead run, what would have been a go-ahead run, and, and the Suarez error simultaneously. You can think, the Tigers can think, the Tigers and the, and the umpires can thank Hernan Perez and only Hernan Perez uh, for that because they, they caught a huge break. Because otherwise the Royals could have caught the opposite break. Rick Porcello is uh, 15 and 11 with a 3.19 ERA, whereas Jeremy Guthrie is 11 and 11 with a 4.35 ERA. I, I think the Tigers will beat the Royals in Game Three. Rick Porcello has put pitch has pitched very good, has pitched very well, whereas the Guthrie uh, has at least been owned by the Tigers, and maybe. Uh, not quite being Jeremy Guthrie. There are two uh, channels you can get 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 it on TV, Fox Sports Detroit and TBS, and of course 97 won the ticket in Detroit, and the Detroit Tigers radio network with Dan Dickerson and Jim Price on the call. Now let's go to some college football. First off, starting with the Michigan Wolverines, they they lost to to the Utah Utes twenty six to ten in a, in Ann Arbor.
in, in which the thunder, lightning, heavy wind, and hail had nothing to do with, with the game itself. It only suspended it, the game for about two hours and 24 minutes. So the weather had no effect on the game. Michigan, the Michigan Wolverines turned the ball over four times and are now a negative nine on the season in, in turnover margin on the in the turnover margin on the season. Michigan's finished its second game of the year without an offensive touchdown. The Michigan defense scored scored the only touchdown of the game. Kalen Clay for Utah re returned a 66-yard a, a punt for, from 66 yards out to take all the way to the house for a touchdown for Utah. They also scored two field goals near the end of the game to pretty much ice it. Michigan's offense was just terrible. Devin Gardner finished 14-26 for 148 yards in passing and two interceptions before being lifted for Shane Morris in the fourth quarter. Morris promptly threw an interception and the game was suspended with 7.51 to play due to, due to lightning. It didn't matter. Michigan was already beaten badly. And speaking of storms, Brady Hoke's program finds itself in one. I have a couple comments uh, from Detroit Sports Mafia on Twitter. New York said, from about the Tigers, New York said play was not reviewable. There was a throw to third, but no call was made. Now that that that's actually a good point. Uh, Uh, the, yeah, the, yeah, the umpires were uh, kind of confused, and Hernan Perez, like I said, pointed it out again. He passed the word to Omar Vizquel, and Vizquel passed it on to, Os to Brad Osmus. And Osmus challenged it, and the umpires conferred it, and then they, they reviewed it. Because because Salvador Perez never even touched the never even touched the bag after after the ball was hit for a line drive to Kinsler to Ian Kinsler at second base and then they and then Detroit Sports Mafia comments again time to have a quarterback change for Michigan and I agree Shane Morris should be the starting quarterback he's only getting he was only getting warmed up Devin Garner is just Devin Garner is a tough quarterback, but he just doesn't have enough left in the tank. Not nearly, not nearly enough left. It's time for Morris to take over. Devin Garner should not, should not even be drafted in the NFL, in my opinion. Let's see here. On to Michigan State. 
the Spartans clobbered the Eastern Michigan Eagles 73 to 14. Yeah, that's right, 73 to 14. It's not a typo. They dominated in historic fashion. Mike Griffith, Mike Griffith from MLive.com writes, the number, late, the number 11 ranked Spartans raced out to a historically large halftime lead, 40, 49 to nothing. En route to, to the 73-14 victory over the Eagles, who are 1-3. Spartans are 2-1 and one overall. The 73 points record, scored represent, represent the third most in Michigan State history and the most since the 1989 Spartans scored a school record 76 against Northwestern. Michigan State's 49-0 lead at, at the half was the largest in school history dating back to at least 1946 the year 1946 when the Spartans sports information staff began keeping such detailed statistics. Michigan State idled last week after its 46-27 loss at number two Oregon the week before outgained the Eagles by uh, outgained the Eagles 320 yards to one yard in the first half and held the Mid-American Conference team without a first down until the third quarter. The Spartans opened the second half with second-string quarterback Tyler O'Connor Tyler under center, and he led them on a seven-place, 61-yard scoring drive that made it 56 to nothing and represented the most points scored at Michigan State by a Mark D'Antonio coached team. Mark D'Antonio's the man. The Eagles' in initial first down came at the 9.07 mark of the third quarter, and on the next play, Rob Bolden faked a handoff and hit Tyler An Allen with a 43-yard touchdown pass. Michigan State returns to action at noon next Saturday at Spartan Stadium against the Wyoming Cowboys on homecoming day. You can hear that on the Spartan Sports Network, WJIM and in in East Lansing and WJR in Detroit, with George Blaha and Dra George Blaha and Jason Stray George Blaha and George Blaha and Jason Strayhorn on the call with an Otis Wy Ol Otis Wiley, their sideline reporter. Other scores for other scores uh, in college football. Uh, Central Michigan lost to Kansas twenty-four to ten, and Western Michigan clobbered Murray. The Western Michigan Broncos clobbered the Murray clobbered the Murray State Racers forty-five to fourteen in Kalamazoo. My my time is about up. I'll I'll preview the Lions tomorrow tomorrow morning. I'll uh, also talk about Game Three of the Tigers too. Until then, this is, this is Taylor Phillips saying TTFN. Ta ta for now.